What is that? Uh, is that bird? Uh, How does this even happen? Uh, because of all the videos you make, bro. Pseudo science police, it seems. What are you even saying? It's because of karma, bro. What you thought you'll criticize everyone and get away with it, huh? <laughs> the universe will pay you back, bro. That's not what I'm saying. I'm indoors. How can this even happen? I get it, I get it. You're saying. How can I prove that karma exists? Let me ask you, how can you prove that it doesn't exist? Where are you getting this logic from? Uh... Hi. Bear biceps, Ranveer, I want to talk to you directly because I know someone on social media is going to share this video with you and you're probably watching this right now and you might be tempted to copyright strike me but if you do that it'll only look bad on you because it'll seem like you want to silence all criticism in fact people have done that to me in the past and it didn't turn out too well for them so just sit back, relax, and let the comments do their job if I make no sense. Anyway, unlike other people that I've covered in this series of pseudoscience police, I don't think you're deliberately spreading misinformation. And I don't see arrogance in you, unlike this guy. So I'm not gonna be harsh. I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong about many of the things you say and what are the issues with accepting these sorts of ideas, let alone spreading them, because you are spreading misinformation. Probably unintentionally, probably you've been misled by people in your circles, but right now there is a huge audience watching you, especially young people, and you're misleading all of them. Ranveer, I used to like your content. Back when you were doing fitness videos, I used to watch a lot of your content. And as far as I've seen, the advice you were giving was genuinely good, scientifically accurate. And if people follow that advice, they're bound to achieve results. The issues began when you started focusing on spirituality, particularly with your podcast. Spirituality. Spirituality. Uh, spirituality. 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 What is spirituality? No one can tell you. It has no single clear definition. A search on YouTube gives you an unending list of videos, all of which have their own take on spirituality. I mean, people can tell you what spirituality means to them, but that's about it. So I'll, I'll tell you what it is for me. Go ahead. Um, it's just, it's like a few basic factors. The top of which I've realized over time is meditation. Like meditation is a huge part of spirituality. Me personally, I do not practice one specific belief. What is being spiritual? To be happy, to be in peace, enthusiastic, energetic, karma. For me, this is my like description of it. The belief that there's energy in the world and you can use the energy. Spirituality doesn't really have a specific definition. It can actually be defined in many ways. And because it's so vague and undefinable, spirituality becomes this umbrella under which there are these ideas, a lot of which are fuzzy, uh, ideas that don't have any good evidence for them, to ideas that are just straight up pseudoscience. These are the issues that I see with spirituality. I'll cover all these points as the video goes on. Let's start with the first one. Because of the lack of evidence for almost all ideas that come under spirituality, you now have to justify them by saying that you have to be open to the possibility. Don't be so close-minded, bro. You have to be open. That's the basis of spiritual growth. You might even dismiss me as someone who's close-minded. But am I close-minded though? If I don't seriously consider an idea that has no supporting evidence for it, am I close-minded? Or am I just rational? I feel that calling people close-minded is a cop-out. It's a way of sidestepping any engagement with anyone who might bring a genuine disagreement to the table. 
Let's take your video on karma as an example. The moment you understand the concept of karma, you understand the concept of rebirth, which I truly, truly believe in. And for the people who say that, you know, how can you prove that it exists? My question to you is, how can you prove that it doesn't exist? There must be some truth in that concept, which has caused so many books to be written on that concept, which has caused so many evolved people to turn to spirituality, so many evolved people to talk about karma so often. There has to be some truth. And if you're going to switch off that possibility completely, you're limiting your own growth. You have to be open. That's the basis of spiritual growth. Be open and curious. Don't come to conclusions. I've mentioned all the logical fallacies that you made in case you want to look them up. But I'll explain what's wrong with this thought process with a simple analogy. Suppose I told you that there's a unicorn in your room, but it's invisible, you can't see it, intangible, you can't touch or feel it, and it's silent, you can't hear it. There's no way for you to infer its existence. So are you going to believe me? Because you can't prove it doesn't exist. Go ahead, try. I'll wait. You can't prove that it's not there. So are you going to believe me? You'll just say, hey man, it's ridiculous what you just said. Nobody is going to believe you. And I'd say, you're right. You shouldn't believe me. I just made a ridiculous claim that I've not supported with evidence whatsoever. There are a million such claims that I can think of right now. All equally lacking in evidence, all equally ridiculous and all equally undisprovable. Wait, is that a word? The idea behind karma is kinda like this. It's an exceptional claim with no evidence in support. The only difference is there are many people believing it. But an idea doesn't become right if there are many people believing it or if you can't prove it wrong. It becomes believable when there is convincing evidence to support it. You keep saying how there are so many evolved people who believe in this idea, but you don't know the reason. Do they know the reason? Can anyone tell me the reason? The comments are yours. I always use what Carl Sagan once said. He said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And that brings us to the next claim. You have a podcast with Dr. Radhakrishnan Pillai where you talk about something called astral travel. I highly recommend you read that book if you're interested in this concept of your soul leaving your body mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and traveling around the world. Yeah. Like as in, you, your consciousness and your mind going using that pole vaulting technique yeah. getting past your own physical body mm -hmm. and then going and seeing the world and the universe yes rebirth is that i am now the soul is in this particular body or this soul is actually using this body the body will get worn off like an old cloth both bar pen liya. so mm -hmm. let me go to a new one so actually a body is traveling from one bird to another and it is using different bodies to in its spiritual journey you know mm -hmm. so as uh, somebody put it we are not human beings on a a spiritual journey. It's actually we are spiritual souls on a human Good journey. journey. <laughs> now coming back to astral travel, there are people who actually can use this body, go out of this body, maybe enter into another body, oh. use that body and come back. Wow. These are just outrageous claims being made with literally no evidence. I can't believe nobody is calling this out. Showcases where this was observed and it wasn't some sort of hallucination. I'm sure that'll make for a brilliant video. I'm sure it'll get a lot of views. But there are enough evidences of people actually having out of the body experiences. Mm. Dr. Pillay also mentions this phrase out of body experience which has neurological and psychological explanations behind it, like dream states and hallucinations and an altered state of consciousness and can in no way be treated as evidence for the soul. But when you back up these incredible claims with and maybe people say okay, once the person is dead, can he come back? Of course he can. Mm -hmm. There's a process and I'm here not going to tell you about the out of the body experiences. How is anyone supposed to believe that? Remember, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But let me tell you, I have personally actually gone through this experience. Same. Both of you in the podcast talk about how you've both had this experience of astral travel. I mean, I don't know if I was really into spirituality and I really wanted to have an astral travel experience, I might have 
a dream that I might think is the slightest resemblance of what an astral travel experience would be like. I might mistake it for that and without examining it a little more closer, I might just jump to the conclusion that I just had an astral travel experience. I think this may have been what happened with you. Either way, these things are far too subjective to be anything other than a personal experience. Because a lot of the claims that come under spirituality have no basis in science, people who endorse spirituality often find themselves going against science. Which is also ahead of modern science. It's way ahead of modern science as of now. Would sure. You say that? Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, people, like, if you say this to, like, the average person, they'll be like, eh, what are you saying, man? Like, what are you But there is quantum physics behind it, man. I, I also feel that, you know, th all these things are beyond science. Mm. But you should also understand that science isn't as advanced as you think it is. There's still a lot for science to discover, especially the Western world. Uh, also, I feel that, again, I keep saying this in a bunch of our podcasts, that there's a whole world of science that the world of science hasn't discovered yet. You often say things like, modern science is a long way to go. A long way to go till where? Till it agrees with your claims right now? What if it doesn't? Are you gonna reject science then? That's not how this works. Science doesn't really care where an idea comes from. If after thorough research, the conclusions are in favor of the idea, then it's a good idea. Otherwise, it's a bad idea. I'll give you an example of one such bad idea. Astrology. I've done a video on it. It's been studied and researched thousands of times and has been conclusively shown to be pointless. And yet you promote it like it's the next best thing, couched in statements that defend it from scientific scrutiny like science isn't advanced enough. Not just astrology, you defend other ideas like manifestation, law of attraction, with the exact same logic. This kind of anti-science narrative that you get your followers to buy into kind of extends itself to other fields as well. For example, medicine. A distrust of science usually translates well into a distrust of medicine. People with serious medical conditions instead of modern scientific medicine opt for alternative medicine. I'll leave a link down below uh, to a thread that I've written on Twitter on how Steve Jobs lost his life because he chose to treat his cancer with alternative medicine. Another thing that I've noticed you push often is this notion of Western science. And again, what you said about Ayurveda talking about things, but Western science is not. Western sciences is going to discover 20 million things in the next 20 years Absolutely. about Ayurveda. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you kind of feel that Western thought has kind of taken over all of the world, where uh, unless there is a Western scientific proof about something, people just don't buy it anymore? This Eastern-Western dichotomy does not exist in science. There is only one science. But this false dichotomy that you promote pushes this notion that ideas from the East are seen as bad ideas because they're from the East, when that's not the case at all. They're bad ideas simply because they are bad ideas, not because they're from the East. What I see happening is a lot of young people watch your content and end up moving away from science, especially at a time when humanity is approaching things like interplanetary travel and asteroid mining and stuff, none of which would be possible without science. If we want the country to advance well into the 21st century, which I've seen you talk about. And uh, a common goal is to India ko change karna. Hmm. We basically, if we have 2 billion people in India or 3 hmm. billion people in India, if we have captured 1 billion people in India, if we have 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 1 billion people in India, if we isn't there an irony there? In your podcast with Abhijit Pradhan, there is an attempt to reconcile spirituality and science. Now, coming back to quantum physics, you had told me one very beautiful story mm. about uh, 2001 when the World Trade Center attacks had happened. Could you just like share it with the viewers? Because this kind of blew me away and I'm sure it blew them away as well. So, uh... I got into this rabbit hole of quantum physics uh, 
uh, from this documentary called What the Bleep Do We Know? Okay. So what the bleep do we know is really about, hey, we look at the world from one perspective. What the bleep do we know is a very well acclaimed 2004 pseudoscience documentary. And I watched the whole thing for this video. Number one, it's a pseudoscience documentary. So the things being expressed in that documentary are supposed to be taken with a pinch of salt. And number two, there is no such experiment that he mentions where meditators change the pH of water. It's not there in the whole documentary. And I found no research which talks about such an experiment either. I'll leave a link down below to that documentary. It's right here on YouTube. You can go watch and make sure that what I'm saying is correct. And yeah. Abhijit is right. It's not a woo-woo experiment. It's a plain lie. I put a link to the whole podcast down below. You can go watch it and make sure I'm not taking his words out of context. Make sure that this is the idea that he is expressing. Basically, he's talking about this quantum phenomena called entanglement. So there is there is this principle called entanglement mm. yeah what does that basically mean it means that when two electrons mm. start, they interact with each other they suddenly connect mm. and even if they are separated and one electron is in Alaska and the other one is in you know Himalayas or whatever what happens to electron A happens simultaneously to electron B like soulmates. and that's called entanglement oh. And it's a quantum physics thing. So this has been proven by scientific experiments, yeah. etc. So when you think of that same thing of, hey, I thought of someone hmm. and that person connects, something is something is getting communicated. 100%. When someone thinks of you and you get this feeling that you're being thought of, this may be what's happening. This is not even an explanation because quantum mechanics deals purely with the subatomic world. So when something happens in the macro world, you can't use this as an explanation. So when someone thinks of you and you get that feeling and you can't figure out why, you can be sure that it's not because of quantum mechanics. I see a similar thing that happens in this video as well. Uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, they say that if you keep walking into a wall a million times, eventually you'll be able to walk through it. What she's talking about is a quantum phenomenon called tunneling. When an electron is on one side of a wall or barrier of very high potential, it has no way of being seen on the other side. But quantum mechanics gives it a chance, a probability of being found on the other side. This only becomes significant in nanoelectronics in very tiny transistors of uh, nanometers of gate length. However, once again, we see it being applied to something that happens in the macroscopic world to human interaction in this case. Coming back to your science and spirituality podcast, you talk about Reiki and how it has helped you personally. So basically Reiki is touch healing. So say you're injured in a particular part, someone will conduct a Reiki session over that particular part of your body and related parts that are also injured and kind of heal you through their touch. Now there's not scientific proof behind this, but you've experienced Reiki, I've experienced Reiki. What you feel is actually real. And this is something only a Reiki practitioner will be able to vouch for. Have you seen faith healers and the believers who are being healed? I'm sure you agree that it's fake. It's a scam. Close scrutiny. Come on, there's power! In the name of Jesus. But thousands of people attend those events and they genuinely feel their pain and their ailment gone. So why is it a scam? It's because a person's subjective experience is influenced by a lot of factors. For example, the psychological need to be healed can give rise to the placebo effect and the high energy events that these people hold uh, can cause adrenaline rush and adrenaline is a hormone which, uh, which uh, suppresses pain and discomfort. And it's a scam because this adrenaline rush is temporary. People pay the healer, come back home and find that their pain or their ailment has come back and they haven't really been healed. 
that's why a person's subjective experience uh, their subjective feeling of whether a treatment helped them or not cannot be used as uh, as a way of measuring how effective a treatment is when a person feels better from a treatment you need to make sure that it's the treatment that's making them feel better and not any of these other factors you need to control these other factors that's exactly what a clinical trial does it makes sure that a treatment is effective before it gets approved have the sort of trials or research been applied to reiki yes they have and they show no evidence in support in fact the ideas that reiki is based on like life energy or chi or prana or chakra points there is no empirical evidence for any of them either once a person believes ideas that have no evidence for them it's easier for them to start believing more such ideas you often find people who believe in a bunch of such ideas if a person believes in astrology you can also bet that they believe in crystal healing uh, the law of attraction in energies chakras etc you yourself have promoted a bunch of these ideas on your podcast once you start this journey into spirituality you will find yourself falling prey to a lot of such ideas and i use the phrase falling prey because a lot of these ideas are just predatory scams ideas like crystal healing or law of attraction they're full of these grifters who want to make you think who want to make a quick buck out of you by making you think you got some value out of the money you paid scams then there are these pseudoscience champions that you've endorsed in your podcast who run their own cults i mean foundations i'm not going to talk about them in detail here i've done videos in the past but that's what i have to say about spirituality i hope i've justified all the points that i mentioned at the beginning and i'll add to it i don't think spirituality offers anything unique there's nothing uh you can find only in spirituality that you can't find anywhere else and in my opinion it's not worth uh going into spirituality and risking falling for all these scams but with you ranveer the sudha science does not stop with spirituality let's see what else you and us i want to start off on this whole no fab thing bhai this is something a lot of teenage guys especially are very intrigued by young guys i think our audience is primarily young and teenage guys only uh what's your whole situation with no fab how did you get into it and like you know i you are following it right yes, now yes 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 first of all i did not i when i came across this no fab and cement retention are both ideas lacking in research there aren't enough studies but whatever is there does not support the idea this study says that masturbation is not only harmless but is normal it doesn't conclude any benefits of long periods of abstaining from masturbation whatever benefits are claimed to be associated with nofap may be due to a placebo effect or an anticipation of benefits from hearing other people talk about it one thing that i've noticed is people who heavily endorse ideas like nofap usually cite their own experiences as a source i've explained how that's extremely subjective prone to bias and cannot be treated as a reliable form of evidence As for semen retention, let's see what you say on your podcast. Is the biology behind this concept that your actual uh, semen liquid does it get absorbed by the cell walls or something? Like, what do you think? Have you do you have any knowledge about this? I'm not sure how much forward modern science has gone into it, yeah. but Ayurveda is very clear about the fact that it moves upwards and nourishes your cells, yeah, yeah. brain. and yeah. the overall body yeah in fact in even in vices there are certain kinds of pranayams breathing exercises through which um, you can actually change the flow of semen so i've learned a pranayam like this we're not allowed to talk about this kind of pranayam on a public platform but there are actually techniques in yoga which allow you to 
change the direction of semen's flow a lot of conclusions from ayurveda and yoga are not based on empirical evidence semen flowing upward and nourishing your brain is an extraordinary claim and if that's not backed up with evidence better than ayurveda says so then it's just a claim without evidence here's what empirical research i did find on semen retention This study concludes that it may be beneficial if you reduce your duration of abstinence. Anything more than a few days may not be beneficial. And it doesn't conclude anything like semen flows to your brain and nourishes it or whatever. Either way, there aren't enough studies that conclude that either practice is healthy or unhealthy. And since we don't have enough conclusions on the matter, we shouldn't go around making our own. The idea of alpha males or any other category of males in human society is not science backed. I've seen your video on alpha males and it doesn't really focus on this categorization but rather on what an asli mard or a real man is. And to be honest this idea is really regressive because it creates this undue pressure on men uh, to be a certain way. and uh, it can be really toxic because young men begin hating themselves for not living up to a certain standard that's an easy ticket to bad mental health and you've openly stated how you're against choke up culture and you're a one woman man and you've backed it up with pseudo science like yeah. can really fuck up your head like it can okay. mess you up if you're just you know sleeping around with multiple people also yeah. the the spiritual aspect of sex is uh they say that when you choose to have sex with someone mm-hmm. you're accepting all of their karmas as yours yeah, absolutely it's a sacred thing mm-hmm. you are giving your energy to someone else mm-hmm. you know someone else is giving your their energy to you mm-hmm. and then you go home and you have sex with someone else or your partner and stuff there's a energy mix that's happening that can emotionally affect a man and a woman yeah the world of yoga keeps talking about how physical intimacy contains a lot of exchange of energy even when you kiss somebody you do exchange your energies there is a transference of one energy to the other this is completely ridiculous and not evidence backed whatsoever but while you say all this at the same time you go on to make videos like these ladki kaise pataye proven tinder tips doesn't this promote hookup culture isn't that hypocrisy I mean I get how a large section of your audience wants to view content like this but you shouldn't compromise your values for views. I also see content like this where the thumbnails are often just pure clickbait and clickbait isn't necessarily bad but this promotes certain ideas or messages in your content which are again not evidence based and that isn't really fitting for what you call india's smartest podcast right like i said in the beginning the things you promote may be a result of whatever influences you may have had and you're only promoting what i what you feel is right i presume but it may be useful to listen to criticisms from the other side instead of just dismissing them as close minded hey if you can listen to the criticisms and uh, defend your viewpoints then you can be even more confident in the things you say right either way ranveer i hope you learn and grow from this whatever i've pointed out are uh, things that i feel is wrong with your content i've heard similar opinions from multiple others but if you disagree with me feel free to let me know why uh, the comments are all yours and to the rest of the people watching i hope you like the video feel free to stick on because i have a message for you at the end I've started memberships on my channel. You see that join button down there? Click on that to support me financially. Right now what I feel is wrong with my content is a terrible upload frequency. I upload maybe once in 2 or 3 weeks, sometimes even worse, and I need to change that because the YouTube algorithm doesn't like it. You guys don't like it, and the first thing I need to do is hire an editor. 
and unfortunately the youtube ad revenue is nowhere near enough to afford me one which is why i need support from my audience i've made it really easy for you by making the lowest possible support level my first support tier but if you want more perks then i have higher support tiers and i've started a patreon page also and i prefer you support me on patreon rather than youtube memberships because patreon uh, gives a greater share to creators unlike youtube and to incentivize you to do so i've made some unique perks for patreon go check it out either way i hope you see enough value in my content to support me don't worry my main content on this channel will always remain free but long term i want to dedicate more time to this hire a team expand to multiple channels multiple languages etc and i hope you will help me make my dream come true my name is pranav and i'll see you in the next video till then remember science is dope